Hello, my friends, and welcome back to my apartment. I hope you make yourself comfortable. Don't know why I'm doing the Steel Magnolias voice, but it just came out. Today, I want to share with you guys some of the things I'm currently obsessed with from fashion, beauty products, lifestyle, even though that word to me sounds a little bit bougie, food, snacks, yada, yada, yada. These are a few of my favorite things. Maybe it's a video for favorites, but I didn't know if I should do February favorites because this is the end of February if you do March favorites since March is starting. I don't know the rules on that, but it's just, yeah, what I've been into lately. So, if you haven't noticed, I have very flat hair. Thank you, Dad, for your genetic input of very thin, fine, straight hair. While my mom has like these flowing brunette locks with so much volume, so much curl, and I have my dad's hair. But I do what I can to give it as much volume as possible. I'll show you guys what I was literally just doing in the bathroom before this video to get cam ready for y'all. I have this from AG Hair Care. It's called a dry lift and it's basically like this paste that you put in your hair and it just kind of volumizes it. It's kind of hard to do in the camera my phone. I actually got it from a hairstylist I worked with who used it on me on a shoot and I ended up loving it so much that I got some for myself and it smells really nice too. So that should give me some volume. Problem is my hair is so long that that makes it really hard to, for volume to stay. For real, on shoots, they will have to put so much hairspray on my hair that it does not even feel like human hair when I come home at the end of the day. And I'm always terrified that I'm never going to be able to brush it out. But I've survived so far. Coconut oil sometimes is the only thing that will get it untangled or just not so stiff. Another thing I love for hair volume is from Lush, their big shampoo, which I've already made a complete mess of. But if you can see inside, it's like this texture. It's made with sea salt, seaweed, and fresh citrus juices. Give limp hair body volume and serious shine. Only at your local Lexus. I don't know why I just was thinking of a Lexus commercial, which has nothing to do with this, but only at your local Lush would have been the better one. The other stuff is great. Shout out to my friend September. She's also a thin haired girl like me. And she said this was like the only thing that ever really worked for her. And then I started using it and I really, really like it a lot. It just gives your hair more volume. And I like using natural stuff. I love Lush. Every time I go in there, I feel like they're so nice to me that I want to befriend them. And they're so helpful. It was like 30 bucks, around 30 bucks, maybe 28. But it lasts so long because you really only need a little bit each time. I don't know like a natural way to segment the products. So this is, might be all over the place. But hey, all my videos are kind of like that. But speaking of showering, since we're talking about shampoo, I have been loving Epsom salt baths. And I have the bubble bath too, because I love taking bubble baths. It's something I do at the end of the day when I'm super stressed. I can literally feel everything just floating out of my body. Because I work out five to six days a week, it's really, really hard on my muscles for recovery sometimes. So if you also work out a lot or you have any kind of you know, injury, this helped so much. I feel like stronger than before because it really helps, you know, give my muscles that soothing that they need. And it's just fun to take bubble baths. Next item on the docket, the perfume that I've been wearing. This is the second bottle since December. It's a clean, fresh scent. I should probably tell you what it is. It's Victoria's Secret Bombshell Seduction. This is, perfume is so good that my boyfriend actually wears it too. And he has been telling me he'll get so many compliments at work being like, oh my God, you smell amazing, like what is that? He's like, yeah, it's my girlfriend's Victoria's Secret perfume. That's probably why I'm running so low is because he steals it all the time from me. First he was super skeptical, like he smelled it and he's like, oh my God, I love it, it smells really good, but that's a perfume for girls. But then I told him, how is a smell gendered? I've always been a firm believer of like gender is fluid, but for me the perfume one has been the one that just blew my mind because I've had it before while I wore cologne just because I would smell cologne and I liked how it smelled. And I don't know if they're still running this promo, but when I went it was buy a perfume and you get the body lotion free, so that was awesome. Which is great because this time of year I'm as dry as a cactus and I need to be lotioning everywhere. And that day they were also running a promo and I got this bag that I'm actually going to send to my sister because her name is Victoria and it says Love Victoria on it which is so cool. 
I always tell her, man, like, you're so lucky your name's Victoria. You could go to Victoria's Secret and get all the, like, Victoria Sports stuff. It says your name on it. I would totally do that if I were you. She goes, yeah, well, I'm not as paid as you are. I don't need to be walking around with my name everywhere on my shirt. But then, like, yeah, that kind of would be weird. I don't know if I would wear a shirt that just said Alexandria. <laughs> be a little, a little weird. Another beauty product, or maybe it's more of, like, a skincare product. I've been really into is this from Trilogy Everything Balm. It's like a salve. It's so great. Sometimes this is the only thing that will save these dry lips of mine this time of year. And you can put it on anything, your skin, cat scratches. Shout out to Cooper. He's sitting right next to me on the couch. And it smells amazing. I think it has, I'm pretty sure it has rose oil because it just smells like roses. Everything's coming up roses. Then for my fashion products, I don't have too many to show you. It's mainly these leggings I've been obsessed with. They're gym leggings, but I wear them all the time just because they're so comfortable. Worn them to take a nap. Worn them to watch Wu House Ice in New Jersey. And also work out, you know. They're from Gymshark, and this is not sponsored. I wish it was. Hint, hint, if anyone from Gymshark is watching this. First pair I got like a year ago. It's like this pretty pastel light pink color which I liked because usually my previous older leggings were all black and I wanted to switch it up and have like more cute outfits then I got this really cute camel color by the way they make your butt look amazing they have like this cinching thing so if you're like me and you're kind of lacking in the caboose area it really helps add like some curve to it, it makes it look like you got a booty even if you don't have one I ended up loving the camel one so much, I got it in the purple color. I think this one's my personal favorite of the three camel ones. Of course, you always gotta buy it in black. Duh. And this pretty, this is one of my favorite colors, like the sky blue. These are like the different fit, they have like the holes on the side. That's actually what I'm wearing right now, if you can see. That's a very bad angle, I know, but... I'm sitting on a couch. Then the other two fashion items for this favorites video aren't necessarily fashionable, but they are definitely functional. One of the hardest things about being tall is finding pants that are actually long enough. Pretty much all my pants are basically capris. They never go fully past my ankle or fit properly. So I have exposed ankles all the time. I literally will have ankle tan lines in the summer. And in the winter, my ankles are absolutely freezing anytime I'm wearing tennis shoes which I wear a lot because living in New York, I walk so much and I also go to the gym. And when I go to the gym, I know I could put on boots and then change into tennis shoes, but I'm very lazy and just want to go and not have to deal with that. So I started wearing leg warmers. But anyway, yeah, $7 Amazon, super easy to put on. I put them on over my tennis shoes even sometimes. And you know what? I like the retro feel of it. The other, a functional but not necessarily fashionable item I have are my muffs and I know it looks dorky and I look like a 12 year old whose mom is making them go on a like ski trip actually is that a real scenario I don't know my parents were definitely not the kind of people who had money to force me to go on ski trips and I also look like Princess Leia it's a great actually it helps for when I'm going to castings or going for jobs and it's freezing but I don't want to put a hat on because then I'll get awful hat hair honestly I feel like they keep me warmer than hats I have like a big square head so hats always ride up and like parts of my ears are still exposed it's really my ears that get the coldest not like the top of my head so these are perfect and I wear them all the time. I have a pair in white too, somewhere in the back of my closet, probably lost in the clutter. Sorry for the saw noise, by the way, too. I feel like every time I try to film a video, there's always construction noises, but it's New York, there's, you can't escape it. Necessarily fashion, but it could technically be a accessory and it's also in the functional category, which is reusable shopping bags. Good for the environment and I'm telling you guys, it's so much easier to carry stuff with these than the plastic bags. More often than not, I'm carrying home groceries. So before, I'd have tons of plastic bags just all over my arm, like walking like this. This is easy, you throw everything in the bag and then just roll it over your shoulder. It saves up so much space, you can fit way more in here. It just makes more sense, safer for the environment, and you don't have to have a million plastic bags just hanging out under your sink in another plastic bag. 
And one thing I'm often filling said bags with is my new favorite snack, pistachios. Literally like four left in this bag. I go through like a bag every couple days. It's that bag. I think it's fun to crack them open. Does that sound lame that I think that's fun? But they're very healthy for you. I have a very big savory tooth, like salty tooth, so I love like the salt on them. And I'm a muncher. I've never really been like a big meal person. Like of course I eat meals and like meals, but I love snacking. Like I love popcorn. I love stuff where you can eat a million of the little things, like fries. So this is perfect for if you're a muncher like me. You know what I'm saying? Like for example, when I was a kid one time on a Saturday, I remember instead of eating lunch, I ate an entire bag of Tostitos with no salsa. I don't know, I had the worst diet when I was in high school. But if you're gonna go to the movies, don't sneak them in because I tried to do that the other week and I realized how loud pistachios are so I only ate like one and then I'm like, this is a bad idea, the plan is off, why did I bring this giant purse for nothing? Because now I can't eat my pistachios. So then I just went out and bought popcorn instead. That's another thing on my favorites list is I saw the movie Isn't It Romantic with Rebel Wilson. It was a very good movie and Liam Hemsworth is a very good looking dude. I will admit that. And Adam Devine, the guy in it, he's from Workaholics, reminds me so much of Jack Black. Anyone else get that vibe? But yeah, just like a nice feel-good parody of romantic comedies and I laugh the entire way through. Other things I've been watching and loving, Trigger Warning with Killer Mike on Netflix. I think there's only six episodes. I ended up like binging it one Saturday night. Also, Abducted in Plain Sight on Netflix. You're gonna wanna throw your phone at the TV at times and it does make you a little uncomfortable. I don't like watching shows with a lot of like graphic scenes or hearing graphic details. And some parts of it were uncomfortable to the point where I had to pause and <sighs> this damn saw. I had to pause it at times because it made me so uncomfortable where I didn't even know if I was gonna be able to finish it. Just cause it's so sickening to hear people can be so vile and disgusting and harm children in the way it's described in that video. But I think sometimes you need to feel uncomfortable because if you're just in the dark and in your own world and not hearing people's stories, it's really hard to, you know, imagine that even happens if you've been privileged and haven't had trauma happen to you. And so I want to make myself uncomfortable and hear those stories because then, because then you'll want to help change the system and find ways to help survivors and really empathize with them better if you're understanding just what they went through. Even though you'll never really be able to get it, it really helps open up uh, ways to relate and help survivors. Also, if you're like me and you're super into true crime shows, the Ted Bundy tapes are also a really good documentary. I flew through those. A happier thing I've been watching is actually on YouTube, Amelia Farts. I'm obsessed with her videos and her as a person. Her videos originally caught my eye and I thought it was just a parody, like someone doing an act and I still thought it was hilarious but then once I watched a whole video I realized she is brilliant and touching and I'll watch her videos and I'll laugh my ass off and then she'll also make me cry with some super compelling and inspiring speech and I just love the warm energy she radiates and how herself she is and I love people who are unapologetically themselves. Another thing in the entertainment genre I've been obsessed with is musically Casey Musgraves and I know she's super hot right now I did just jump on the bandwagon but yeehaw I'm on it I love her whole golden hour album in general but the song Lonely Weekend I know I compare Fleetwood Mac to a lot of stuff because I'm so obsessed with Fleetwood Mac but her song Lonely Weekend really does sound and more so feel like a Fleetwood Mac song like the beat in it is a little bit similar to Dreams. Some of the harmonies and the background vocals sound just like Christine McVie. So that one is always on repeat. I just think she's a great person all around. I love the lyrics that she writes. I love the way she presents herself. It's like this cosmic cowgirl. It's totally up my alley and yeah, I just love her. It's so great. Like I haven't had a modern artist to like obsess over. I mean, I mean, yes, Flute and Mac still tours and so does Dolly and Cher. But it's just cool to have someone and watch them like in the the beginning, not the beginning because she's had a career for a while, but the heyday of their careers, so to speak. Well, I guess Miley. Her and Miley are like the two current girls. I'm like, oh my god, yes. Then in workout and fitness, I've really been into 
reformer Pilates and getting back into mat Pilates, which is a lot more stretching, which I need because I'm like the most unflexible person on this planet. Literally can't even touch my toes. And I've been blaming it on being tall for too long, so I'm really trying to work on my flexibility. And I kind of have a short attention span in the sense to where I could never really get into yoga because it was so slow. So Pilates is like that medium where it's a little bit more fast paced. I really really want to get into yoga too. I think I will one day. I just need to learn how to relax. But I'm a Capricorn so I don't know if that's going to happen. And then reformer Pilates. I go to SLT in New York. It's the hardest workout I've ever done in my life but I love it the most. It will activate parts of your muscle groups that you didn't even know existed and it's all about moving slowly. I've really taken that to my other workouts to move slower and it actually is a better workout than if you're, you know, going super fast. This is the part of the video where if I had better editing skills I'd insert like a little picture of what the machine looks like so you guys can see it or show like a video. But I don't have those skills. But if you just Google Reform Pilates, there should be like pictures that come up of it. Another fitness thing I've been really into is boxing. I go to Rumble in New York. It's amazing. I feel like a badass. There's this segment where it's like freestyle and you can punch the bag however you want. That is the best stress relief ever when I'm just railing on that bag. Thinking I look like Lara Croft or, you know, a uh, million dollar baby. Yeah, what I really like about that class is it's super high energy, super fast paced. I sweat so much and there's a segment where they turn off the lights kind of so you can't even really see. You're not like looking around at other people. You're not really even thinking. You're just like in this primal state of like releasing stress and it's just an amazing feeling. And then after workouts, my new obsession is Pedialyte. It's not just for children or hungover college students anymore. I mean, I guess people probably knew this for a while, but I just realized you could use it for after your workout. I sweat a lot, so then I need something to replenish those electrolytes. And Cooper is cleaning himself, so his paws in the video. This is great for rehydrating. Of course, also drink water as well, but this just kind of kicks it up a notch because it has all the electrolytes that my body lost from working out. I don't know what category this is, I guess lifestyle, but a planner. I essentially use it as a diary almost where I'll write like what time I woke up, how I felt, um, what I did at the gym, how work went. And I used to always get journals or diaries and I'd write one entry but then I never would keep up with it because sometimes I was just lazy and I just wanted to do bullets. So that's why I'm not going to show you guys like what it says on mine because it's sometimes it's like TMI. Because it is like a diary for me, like I said. There's these super cute illustrations, and I love the little calendar part. I write all my stuff when I have to pay bills, when I have a job coming up, yada, yada, yada. Helps me stay on schedule. And the day parts like this is where I'll write, like, my diary, essential. It'll just be fun to look back in a few years where I have literally every day of a whole year written about. This is so dorky, but I get so excited when it's like a new month a new week and I get to write out my planner like all I have scheduled for the week and you know make it fun do different colors with gel pens this sounds so dorky right now but <laughs> I like stuff like that such a Capricorn move that my favorite hobby is my planner in my free time also when I'm not just <laughs> writing in my planner like it's a diary or scheduling things Cooper is cleaning himself still in reading this book shocker Stevie Nicks makes an appearance in this video um Who's it by? Stephen Davis. I'm kind of mad though because I'm, you know when you're really into reading and you know that you're going to finish the book soon and you're trying to pace yourself because you don't want it to end? I'm in that phase. And I've had this book for a while just because I saw it was a Stevie Nicks book at a bookstore that I had never seen before and I had to buy it. And I have a lot of books like this where I buy them and then I just set them on my shelf kind of like decoration almost and then I never get around to really reading them. It's just so easy to turn on the TV at the end of the day and just let my mind go numb with reality TV. Which by the way, another thing I've been into is Temptation Island, which is probably one of the worst things. Probably one of the most cliche, trashy reality TV shows, but it's definitely entertaining. Like, you can't look away, but you kind of want to. Then of course The Bachelor too, I'm stuck on that. Really got pissed off though, last week was hometown. 
And he asked all four girls' dads for their permission to marry them. I understand some people have traditions and values, but I, it always irked me, the whole viewing a woman as something to be possessed. But anyways, I still watch The Bachelor because I love the drama. You can listen to two Bachelor podcasts, which is very sad and pathetic, but they're very good. Bachelor Party, wait, what's the name of them? Bachelor Party is one, and then Here to Make Friends is the other. But anyway, I wanted to get away from the whole get home from work, just turn on the TV, and that's about it for the rest of the night. So I wanted to read more, and who better than Stevie to get me into reading? I think the re main reason I never got around to reading it for so long is because I thought that I knew everything there was to know about Stevie Nicks, but then there's stuff in here that I didn't know before, so I'm loving it. So if you guys have any book recommendations, definitely hit me up with that. I like books like this, uh, nonfiction. I love biographies. I love books by like women comedians like Amy Poehler, Minnie Colling, Tina Fey. I like true crime books. And I do like fiction books. I feel like it's just harder for me to get into them. So yeah, that's all I got for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video of me just rambling about a bunch of stuff I like. And Cooper in the background taking his afternoon bath. I'm gonna go keep reading this book and probably will stay on the couch for the next four hours. Well, I think I can finish it in two hours. I just get so sucked into it. That's what I love. I love books that suck you in. Thanks for coming over and hanging out with me. I'll catch you guys on the flip side.